if you're a rugby player, you have to be butch, you have to be stocky, you have to have short hair. Whereas that's some of the stereotypes that the girls here are looking to break. So you could be small, thin, you could be six foot tall and built like a bean pole. Anyone can play, that's the whole, that's the whole beauty of this sport. There's a position for everybody. I have received some negative stereotypes from being a women's coach purely because I think there is still that stereotype like I mentioned before that if you're a girl rugby player you have to fit into social or certain social norms so one of the reasons I did want to get on board with the girls when they offered it to me was to break down these barriers make it more inclusive for the girls so that they can actually appreciate the sport as much as I have and had the opportunities I had when playing for the men's teams. I wouldn't say there are many differences between training the boys and the girls. They all train the same. The girls, if not, put more effort into training than the boys do because a lot of them have started up from basics. They've never had the same level of coaching that the men's have had through school, middle school, going through sixth form. So if anything, they put more effort in. They're always looking to compete more. They're always putting the first name on the team sheets. So I'd say anything that their, their work ethic's better than the boys. I'm quite lucky, I've never really had to alter my coaching style. I've had the opportunities to learn different coaching styles to fit different people. So for example, there's always drills that you can take from someone that's played for, for 10 years and someone that's played for 10 weeks. So I'm lucky that the girls here, they're always willing to learn, always willing to listen. So we train three times a week and every week they get better and better because they are listening to the same te training techniques that we use for professionals or amateurs. Play for University of Lincoln rugby team, um, and alongside University, I play for Modern Park Sharks, which is up near Newcastle. I got into the sport um, when I was about 11, I think. When I was that age, women's rugby was only just starting to um, come about. Um, so my local rugby club kind of just made the team at the time. Games were quite rare, um, so within a season I think we only had about five or six games. And because of the limited amount of women's rugby teams, we had to travel all over um, quite far for games. I can see how stereotypes affect players, especially for rugby. Um, it's always been seen as a men's sport, so um, when you tell people or whatever you play rugby, they're always like, oh, it's a men's sport. But I think a lot of that to blame is the media, because we never see women's rugby on TV, so it's always seen as a, a dominantly men's sport. <laughs> Trying to like commute women um, rugby players, you get the same response back. They kind of don't. Those that have never played rugby before don't show any interest because they think it's a men's sport. They think it's scary. They think they're going to get injured, broken, whatever. You can see just as skilled women rugby players as you can men. I think the main difference is potentially aggression within the game. Um, obviously men tend to be a lot more aggressive, so contact-wise they'll make bigger contacts, bigger hits, um, get stuck in a bit more than women will. It was really upsetting one time, we were in the sports fair which is arranged by the Students' Union, chatting to one girl about women's rugby etc and she literally said, no I'll break my neck, it's a man's sport, so everything like that. It's really upsetting as a sport as well that people perceive it that way. Um, it's the way we teach it, that it's safe for everyone. A lot more people want to play the sport if they're a male. It's more male orientated. Um, the women's rugby side of it is still really high contact, high intensity, everything like that, but it's perceived as women shouldn't be playing rugby. Um, a lot of the older generations see it that way. 
um, and it's difficult to change those like negative stereotypes but there are more and more women playing rugby all the time so that's really good to see. I'd say to girls that were interested in the sport but were maybe influenced by the negative stereotypes just to give it a try because I mean I hadn't found a sport that was for me before I started playing rugby at uni. It's really really nice to play in a team atmosphere um, and all the girls are really good. The way they teach you, it's safe, but a lot of people don't realise that until actually the training starts and you get taught how to play rugby, because it is quite a complicated sport to learn with all the different rules and laws and everything like that. From a university point of view, if I'm trying to commute girls to play for university rugby, 90% of our team have probably never played rugby before and then go on to play rugby outside once they finish university, so that's potentially one way to sell it because it proves that once you do get involved that they enjoy it and want to carry it on further. Go in groups. If you're afraid, it's always easier in groups. Join a local team. A lot of the girls have started off in the same position that they would have done. A bit scared, but maybe have watched it on the telly or they've gone to the matches, so that they want to get involved. You don't always get injured, it's not scary, it's not, it's, at the end of the day it's fun and it's fitness. So all I say is do, don't be afraid, do try your best, because at the end of the day it could lead to something professional. A lot of professional athletes that play for the England team, some of them didn't start till they were 20. So it's never too late to start, but always do recommend it. Thank you.